hello to the side and back my name is Toki Uzuru also known as Toki and one the braids are out and I'm giving my hair a good rest for like maybe a month before I put braids back in but two this video is gonna be things that I wish I knew before I started practicing witchcraft now I've already done like two different videos that are similar to this one which was witch myths and ideas to release about being a witch and practicing witchcraft. But as I was trying to look through my notes and kind of like look through all of the videos that I've done, I noticed that I did not do a things I wish I knew before practicing witchcraft video. Like I didn't do a video specifically talking about this topic. Now, as I said in my last video, which if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's right there. I've only been doing research for a good two years. When it comes to practicing, actually practicing the craft, it's more like a year and a half. However, I do believe that I have learned a lot in that year and a half. So here are just some of the things that I wish someone would have told me before, uh, either while I was researching or before I even started this. Some of these will be very specific to witchcraft, spirituality, and like other magical folk practices. Some of this might actually just be like in general advice that I learned while doing the research, but that you could use for like other parts of your life anyway. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one, no one has a clue on what they're doing. It's only up to you to find out what you're doing. <laughs> but like overall, the best slash worst thing about witchcraft as a practice, but like life in general, you don't get a manual. Like there's no one way to go about it. You can still get advice from other people that have gone through like the beginner stage and in fact, this is the reason why I do my videos as I'm still going through the beginner stage so I can remember what it's like to be a beginner. But like, no one really has a clue on what's going on. We're all just winging it. Especially if this is like the first time you've ever thought about um, practicing witchcraft as an actual thing. Like with no joke, with no jokes. Yeah, so basically, no one has a clue on what what they're doing or where they're going. You're going to have to find the directions out yourself, but strictly through trial and error. You can take people's advice. I'm not saying don't, because there are some things that are better if you don't decide to make said mistake, so you don't have to backtrack and do things to correct said mistake, if you can. But always take people's advice with a grain of salt. Number two, take your time and sit with the information before you use it. There are some things that I don't even touch on until I've sat on the information long enough to be like, all right, I feel like I need to bring this up. A lot of the media messages or hidden messages that I find in whatever I'm watching I tend to sit on so I can find out like what's the best way to conclude said message before like I write the outline for the video then there's how to properly go ghost hunting if you want to classify it as that or ghost watching. Uh, pretty much going into any haunted, spirit full, or otherwise paranormal space. Because I can't say for an absolute fact that I've gone through it. I think I've had like one run in with it, but like that's about it. I don't want to go ahead and give like what I would have done in that situation better as like absolute fact before I get more information on like what I could have done better in the situation. And then truly think uh, on why it would be better 
for me to have done this instead of this. But it's not only that, it's also figuring out whether you, it's something that actually does resonate with you. Like I specifically talk about not using white sage in your practice because it's part of the Native American spiritual practice, which would be closed as white sage is, is usually native to Native American lands and how it's being overgrown and overused because of capitalism, I don't feel comfortable in using it. However, that is not to say that I haven't used it before. I actually have. I just don't use it that often. One, I didn't buy it myself. Two, I don't use it that often, if at all. So one, would I still use it? Yeah, but like seldomly. That's why I still have it. I don't want to go ahead and just throw it away. But after it's all gone, am I going to buy it again? No. And there are a lot of people that have a different mindset when it comes to if you have it, what do you do with it after you've learned this information? The answer that I found to resonate with me best is keep it, don't use it too often. Use it if it's like last resort, absolutely necessary. Number three, everyone has their own paths to walk. Again, this could go, this could just be like witchcraft specifically, generalized spiritual practices, life in general. Everyone has their own unique path to walk down. Even though it might look like you guys are going down the same path, it could be you're just going in the same direction. Mundane magic is budget friendly magic, low budget magic, and broom closet magic. All in the same thing. It's making the mundane magical. Bringing the witchcraft into whatever you're doing to create intentions and a specific outcome. Like I've said this before, I usually have a candle lit every time I'm doing a video and it's either green, white, or red. Number five, when you go to buy candles, buy candles with lids. This is not sponsored at all, but this used to be a candle called Winter from Bath and Body Works. And of course, when you get candles from there, they usually have a lid. So while there was still a candle in here, what I would end up doing is just putting the lid when the whenever the candle was lit i just put the lid on it loosely and that would snuff out the flame before i completely close it this is just for people who don't feel like accidentally burning their fingers trying to put out the fires uh trying to put out flames and buying candle snuffers because why just get a candle with a lid Candles with lids saves lives and keeps house fires from starting. That's our PSA for today. Number six, everything with a purpose. This kind of goes into what I said about mundane magic being budget friendly witchcraft and broom closet witchcraft. You're putting intentions into whatever you're doing in order to get a specific outcome. Everything with a purpose actually helped me with not only decorating my room, but when I found out that there was a bit too much stuff in my room, throwing out the stuff that I don't need. Number seven could just help you with things in life in general, but Things like essential oils and perfumes, like actual real perfumes, should not be put in any type of sunlight. Should actually be kept away from said sunlight. Mainly because they will have, they'll evaporate quicker. And you end up just getting um, a more concentrated alcohol smell. Number eight actually has like several different parts. So I'm just going to say it the way I wrote it. 
Don't be afraid to make mistakes, change your labels, and unlearn things that you thought you knew. One of the main points about the spiritual path is to evolve. And if we stay the way that we were originally, we are not truly evolving as people. Even though I will say it till the cows come home, it's best not to choose a label early on. If you don't want to follow said suggestion, you don't have to. But when you do find out that the label you originally gave yourself does not really fit who you actually are, don't be afraid to change it. But also in going into like a new, let's say religion or a new spiritual path, you have to unlearn a lot of the stuff that you gathered from your previous religion or previous spiritual path that you came from. Because what you learned there, nine times out of 10 will not help you on this path. Sure, there might have been some similarities, but like different ways of getting to the same place. And as I said earlier, no one truly knows what they're doing. So if you go ahead and make a mistake, depending on the severity of the mistake, you're good. Number nine is actually time management. Oh my goodness. One of the things that I like to do personally is time myself when it comes to things. So I can see how much time on average I would spend on doing the same thing. Having this information helps me out with figuring out whether I would have time to do other things or whether I don't have enough time to do the thing. And with me understanding how big the time slots between tasks are for me, I can figure out whether I just need to take like maybe five to 10 minutes to sit down and I don't know, space brain before I move on to the next task or whether I actually have enough time to give myself a ritual foot soak or take notes on a book that I'm going through. And last but not least, number 10, be kind to yourself, be honest and be balanced. I know me personally, I have a tendency of pushing myself too hard because I know that what I'm doing is not my best or not what I would classify as my best. At the same time, I also have to remember exactly what circumstances I was able to get myself into when I was quote unquote at my best. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to get on myself if I'm procrastinating or if I'm trying to make up excuses for not doing something. No, I'm going to be completely honest with myself. And then being overall balanced, because I don't want to be, you can't truly be happy like 100% of the time. I know for an absolute fact that I can't be truly happy 100% of the time. I will have to have lows. And congratulations, depending on how long this video is after I've edited it, you have reached the end of the video and so have I, which means I am able to say that we should do the stereotypical YouTuber outro before I start losing my sanity. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment down below any type of questions, comments, or concerns that you have, possibly ideas for future videos. Any type of interaction with my videos helps boost it in the YouTube algorithm. And I've been Tokiko Uzuru, aka Toki, and this is Toki saying Toki out.